Developers of great technology live in constant fear that their products will be Sherlocked. What does it mean to be Sherlocked? The term was first coined in the 2000s, after Apple updated the Sherlock search tool on its operating system only a few months after Corellia Software had created an external application called Watson, making the tool irrelevant. Picasso had a saying, he said, good artists copy, great artists steal. We have, you know, always been shameless about stealing great ideas. If you think of the great technology companies, they're led by people that have an incredibly long-term perspective. Bill Gates' time frame was, I'm going to build something over 30 years. Steve Jobs' time frame was, I'm going to change the world, and even if I have to come back to Apple, I will change the world. I get the sense that Zuckerberg has the same very long-term perspective. In the early 90s, the World Wide Web was just a burgeoning concept. Can you explain what internet is? Well, it's very hip to be on the internet right now. Analysts predicted, however, that by the end of 1995, the online market would be filled with 10 million people. They say two strangers are, on average, distanced by 6.6 .6 degrees of separation. But it was AOL that laid the foundation for the first ever social network and shortened the distance between people to just a click of a button. So why did the company go extinct? We'll walk you through the growth of AIM, its implosion, the inevitable successor, and what's next in digital communications. Why was it so important for America to be online? It would be a way, eventually, for people to get information that they otherwise couldn't get, to connect with people they otherwise wouldn't connect with. We just knew that the killer app of this new medium would be people. Only 3% of people were online, and they were online on average about an hour a week. And so it looked to most people like a niche hobbyist market. Before AOL became the most recognized brand on the web, it was an online search service named PlayNet, which was licensed to QuantumLink. Quantum's growth strategy was to partner with PC manufacturers. One of those partnerships was with Apple, who had just released the Macintosh. They agreed to license the Apple brand name to us, uh, and we created a service called Apple Link Personal Edition. Uh, and they were going to help market it. But then they decided since we wanted to give away software for free, and back then they were selling software and only selling it in authorized Apple store. It's really no free software like you now see in their, in their app store. By 1989, the deal went sour and Apple tore up the contract. Quantum wanted to democratize the internet for everyone, and Apple didn't like the idea of giving away software for free. Quantum retained the rights to the software and, in 1991, renamed it America Online. What looked like a disaster ended up propelling uh, a, a strategy that ultimately led to our, our growth and, and, and momentum. America Online began trading on the NASDAQ on March 19th, 1992 under the ticker AOL and became the top performing stock of the 1990s. That early part of the decade, nobody knew or cared about the internet. Towards the end of the decade, everybody wanted to be part of the internet and that drove that, that the mania really around stock. In 1994, Apple launched eWorld, a Mac-only, subscription-based online service with a graphical interface based around a town square concept. The idea was for eWorld to be a walled garden. eWorld was an aggregator of news, entertainment, email, all filtered through an Apple interface. The service only generated 147,000 users, and ultimately, Apple closed the program in 1996. The most ironic part? Apple told its users to go to AOL. In 1995, the homepage for AOL.com launched. As more users signed onto the internet, the company began to expand its line of products. It generated 3 million active users and the company's revenues zoomed. AOL was expected to be the online industry's first $1 billion company. Remember this little guy? AIM's mascot was designed and released in 1997. The running man became a symbol of America. It takes a while to put the, the foundation in place to enable the revolution to happen. From 1994 to 2016, AOL acquired 77 companies, including most notably, in 1997, CompuServe's online business for $175 million. That brought AOL's membership base to nearly 12 million at the time. I turn on my computer. I go online. Welcome. Welcome. And my breath catches in my chest until I hear three little words. You've got, got mail. mail. 
Welcome. You've got mail. Files done. Goodbye. In the arena of instant messaging, the company took on contender Mirabilis in 1998 for $287 million. The day we launched our yeah. first service, there, there was actually nobody to talk to, which actually was, was what forced us to create the buddy list. There was an operation where you could say, is this friend on, is this friend on, is this friend on? They blasted all at the system. And that portion of the system wasn't all that scalable. So you started to think about how could they just be kept informed efficiently? My boss at the time, Barry Appleman, uh, was able to get it prototyped. The father of the buddy list. Well, I guess uh, plead guilty to that. He assigned me to gather and lead a team as a side secret side project, actually. What you built was the original social network. This wasn't a project to us, that this was a crusade. How it seemed to make uh, country borders uh, drop away. And most people at the time, thought, you know, if you asked them what was the internet, they said AOL. Not just AOL, but Cisco and you know, a lot of the people that were building that infrastructure, WorldCom, people building the communication network, a lot of people were investing to create the infrastructure to make it possible and then create the on-ramps to make it you know, possible. And that really was that, that first wave, basically a 15 year you know, wave. The good years. The good years. Yeah. What was, what was the mood like in the company? What was it like to go to work every day? Any company that's sort of exploding uh, in terms of demand. It's a pretty common thing to have a, a battle call in the middle of the night. One famous story running around or one of the early founders named Ken Huntsman, you know, there were no mobile phones and uh, the phone was on his wife's side of the bed and she got to know uh, so many of the fixes and causes that a lot of the time she would just uh, pick up the phone and walk uh, operation staff. To the <laughs> At the peak, we had over half of all the internet uh, traffic, but there were some kind of clouds on the horizon. One was our transition to broadband. You know, we were dominant in the narrow band world, mm -hmm. which was a world essentially of open access. We lobbied to have similar rules put in place in the broadband world, and they were not put in place. Mm -hmm. So there was some risk we'd kind of, you know, we would be locked out of that, of that uh, future world, and, we, and we, saw, we saw it coming. AOL's thing was connectivity. They brought the online world to people, did a great job at it when there was no broadband. I remember being in a meeting and someone saying, well, the, the broadband uh, is only 0.6% of our use. And I remember thinking, you just, you just don't get it. Uh, and sure enough, you know, the next month, well, it wasn't 0.6, it was 1.2. And then it doubled and doubled and doubled and doubled. By 2001, at the height of its popularity, AOL was making a shift from an innovative tech company into a slow-moving media company. I think one of the most exciting stories is going to be AOL, formerly America Online, you know, the 25-year-old company that used to be the dial-up thing, you know. It's going to be fun to watch because they are trying. They are actually trying to figure out how to do content on the Internet. They're trying to do local news. It's going to be tough because they are, they're trying to do it on ISP revenues that are going down and down and down every quarter. So it's going to be a challenge. To create the first global media and communications company of the Internet century, AOL Time Warner. The acquisition of Time Warner cost AOL $182 billion. That's right, $182 billion. No one remembers how gargantuan this acquisition was. I mean, not no one, you probably remember. I remember, yes. Um, <laughs> $350 like, billion, but thanks even, for asking. Even by today's standards with how the web has grown, a just gargantuan acquisition. Correct. I mean, I think I speak for the internet when I say, what the <laughs> Like, what happened? Here's what happened. Media was already on the precipice of evolving from analog to digital. Time Warner was the largest operator of cable systems and also had a lot of brands. Time Inc. and the, and the magazine side, but you know, HBO and Warner Brothers uh, you know, and Warner Music and, and Turner Broadcasting and you know, just you know, CNN, huge brands. On their side, uh, they were struggling to figure out how to be as relevant in the future than they had been in the past. The deal was valued at $350 billion at the time it was announced. In the five years after the deal was announced, 
Time Warner stock declined 90%. Culture clash, so-called traditional media and so-called uh, internet or, or, or digital media. So in AOL, and this is, this is uh, paraphrasing from Facebook, you know, move fast, break things. That was an anthema to, to the Time Warner uh, side. The way that you know, the companies came together with disparate cultures and perspectives uh, was not, you know, was not helpful. We used to say that the killer app of the internet is people. Uh, and that some of that focus on, on people has, has been lost over the last decade. It shifted to more of a focus on content versus a focus on community. Having Vision without execution is hallucination. Another collaboration taking form on the sidelines was with Apple yet again. At WWDC 2002, it was announced. We have built instant messaging right in to Mac OS X Jaguar. We're the first company they've let under the tent with their 140 million strong instant messaging community, the biggest in the world, the most popular in the world. Apple had cut a deal so that, you know, basically we get to piggyback off that network and you can sign in um, to uh, aim with iChat was huge. Um, that was, I would say, the, the personal communications platform of its day um, and certainly the juggernaut. And you can use your Mac.com email address as your screen name or your AOL screen name. You can select a menu and Rendezvous will go out and find all the people nearby you and build a special Rendezvous buddy list for you. Let me show you how that stuff works. So I've got Phil in my Rendezvous buddy list. Anybody around that's running airport or on the local net that I'm on will show up. It's that simple. By 2006, AOL was struggling to keep up with competitors. At its peak, AOL had a market cap of more than $200 billion. AOL made attempts to purchase Facebook, YouTube, and Tencent, but failed. And we, in fact, uh, integrate with AIM on the Mac OS X desktop with iChat. And we're so happy to show you AIM for iPhone. When you start up this application, you're connected immediately to the AIM network. It was an exciting moment. The first time we were able to run AIM on the device and you know, send a message to one of our buddies and get a response back. It was definitely one of those like, you know, come here, Watson moments. So. <laughs> At Apple's 2011 WWDC event, the company debuted iMessage. For a long time, we were like, we want to do our own messaging service. We want to do our own video conferencing. We want to do these things. And now it's like, okay, here's a reason to do it. I believe we have the best messaging client out there on the iPhone. Send text messages, send photos, send videos. They've been asking us for a messaging solution. And so in iOS 5, we are launching a new messaging service between all iOS 5 customers, and we call it iMessage. And we've added some really nice new features. Many users migrated to SMS or iMessage text messaging. Later on, social networking sites like Facebook integrated a messenger application. AOL's instant message market share had collapsed to less than 1%. AOL Instant Messenger brought down the walls between communication by reducing the cost to almost zero, the speed of communication to instant, and the scope of communication to 80% of people in the world. Even Mark Zuckerberg used AIM in 2004 to discuss the creation of Facebook with his roommate. Eventually, AOL sold to Verizon in 2015 for just $4.4 .4 billion, one of the original instant messaging services will soon be no more. AOL's announcement said simply, Goodbye. <laughs> Watching AOL over the last 10 years has been, it's been hard because in the, in the 90s it really was the, the dominant company, helped define the internet for so many people, helped bring so many people online for the first time. Uh, but it's been a struggle. It launched back in 1997. Considering how fast technology moves these days, a 20-year run might not be so bad. As we got bigger, we shifted from being an attacker to being a defender. Stay competitive because if you don't keep running like crazy, you're gonna get run over. What will the future of instant messaging be? We see four waves, instant translation, AR, chatbots, and blockchain. From the telephone to email to instant messages to iMessage, Zoom calls, and even TikTok, our methods of communication evolve. The commonality of technologies that win always start with networks. Without a large and ultimately dominating network, a communication technology is useless because it can't serve the purpose of connecting people. Aside from network, there's also a persistent need for low engagement, low bandwidth communication tools, like instant messaging and text messaging. And there's also a persistent and always evolving need for high engagement, high bandwidth communication tools like Zoom videos and the most recent phenomena of TikTok. 
instant messaging was 10x better than email for short messages, and text messaging was 10x better than instant messaging because it was on your phone instead of tied to your desktop computer. It's always hard to say where the world is going, but the persistent evolution for communication is denser information formats that are 10x better than the current thing.